rescued. The Dow closed above 15,000 for the first time ever. And the S&P 500 also set a new closing high. So these milestones are another chapter in a remarkable year for the major stock averages. Powering stocks higher today, a batch of better than expected earnings reports, more stimulus from central banks, this time from Australia, and renewed confidence by investors that the U.S. economy is going to be okay. The U.S. rally came in reaction to strong stock performance in world markets this morning, and we'll have more on that in just a moment. But right now, here's a look at the closing digits on Wall Street. The Dow rose 87 points, closing at a record 15,056. The Nasdaq added three. The S&P gained eight points to 1625, its highest close ever. And as Susie just mentioned, the historic highs reached in U.S. equities have helped jumpstart a global rebound in stocks, with bourses from Asia to Europe and beyond making record-setting gains. Our Louisa Boyason has more now from London. Hi, everyone. It's pretty amazing what's going on on global equity markets at the moment. We're seeing a lot of buying into U.S. stocks, as you know. We're also seeing a lot of buying into Asian stocks. So you're looking here at Asian stock markets very, very green, especially today. We saw new five-year highs being hit in Japan on the Nikkei, their main index there. This despite the fact that we still are seeing some soft economic data reports. Uh, the Japanese market players also coming back from a four-day weekend. So you have to bring that into account as well. Now, looking at the European markets, very interesting because when you look at core Europe, we're still seeing softness again in the economic data. So we're still contracting in that front. Some saying we might even have to revisit a recession type scenario. But nevertheless, the German market, Europe's core economy, hitting new all time highs, levels that we haven't seen since before the financial crisis started unraveling in 2007. For nightly business reports, I'm Louisa Boyerson in London. Well, those international markets have been surging in 2013. Japan's stock market has done the best, with the Nikkei index skyrocketing 37 percent year to date. The major European markets in Britain, France, and Germany also up sharply. The one exception, China, its key index down one and a half percent this year. Now, by comparison, the Dow has catapulted almost 15 percent. For more on the outlook for the U.S. and stocks around the world, Art Hogan joins us now. He's market strategist at Lazard capital markets. You know, Art, it's a nice round number, 15,000. But tell us, what does this really tell us about what's going on in the markets, this milestone? Well, well Susie, I think that's a really good question. And it's interesting. We really pay attention when we, when we knock down these round numbers. When we when we pass a you know a thousand mark, a fifteen thousand mark, it wakes a lot of people up to say, hey, this market continues to do well, and there's several reasons why. I think we touched on a couple of those. The U.S. economy is not going into a double dip recession. I think second earnings have been better than expected in the first quarter earnings reporting season, albeit with lighter revenues than we'd like to see. But the third thing I think is the most important is we've got a real global um, synchronized uh, central bank intervention in this economy. We've got central banks around the world pumping liquidity into this marketplace and hoping to stimulate the economy. And I think that's helping stocks uh, probably more than anything else. You know, Art, we looked at those numbers uh, from Europe uh, and they would indicate <coughs> that the sort of optimism is at least flickering over there. Is Europe out of the woods? It's not out of the woods, but the ECB is finally coming to the rescue. So to the extent that uh, the ECB is probably the last of the central banks to really um, start doing things uh, very much like the rest of the global central banks. And Mario Draghi has been very forthwith with commentary, even as early as yesterday, talking about having to be more creative. The, the, you know, the ECB just cut rates earlier last week, and, and they'll continue to look at things they can do. So th they may not be out of the woods, but they're certainly in a lot better shape than they were even this time last year. You know, speaking more from portfolio management, uh aspect. I mean, it's very hard to find value in these rising markets. And so you look to Europe, I'm sure there's a lot of value there, but there's also a lot of risk. Uh, everybody's waiting for that other shoe to drop. So what are you doing in your client portfolios vis-a-vis -vis Europe versus the U.S. stock market? Yeah, that's a great question. And it's interesting, Susie, you and I have talked for years, and for a lot of those years, we talked about having exposure to Europe, having a portion of your, uh, of your portfolio, at least having you know, s some exposure to Europe. What we really have done for the last 18 months is have had you know, clients looking at less European exposure. And if you look at the first quarter earnings reporting season, that certainly played out. What we've seen is those companies, some of those household names that have missed, Europe has been the reason. We don't think it's a strong enough economy to make that a core of your investments. And if you want to have international exposure, we would certainly 
certainly prefer Asia or Latin America. And one country that we point to, Mexico, is, is, is you know, doing some very, very good things. So I think on the mend, but not yet a, a core part of our investment uh, portfolios. My next question was, of all the regions in the world, where would you be adding money incrementally now, assuming that you've got what you want <clears throat> in terms of portfolio allocation in Europe and in the United States? You just told me. Make the case for Mexico specifically. Well, a couple things. The government's done a lot of things to uh, right the ship here. They've got a very strong, robust banking system. They're, um, uh, they've got a lot of delevered um, balance sheets. And one of the things that they're doing right, and it's interesting, when we talk about immigration, one of the things you're going to find is one of the immigration problems that's fixing itself is the Mexican economy. You're seeing actually more people want to go back to Mexico because the jobs are plenty, there's growth, um, and it's not totally dependent on either agriculture or um, commodities. So I think it's, you know, in terms of uh, developing markets, emerging markets, Mexico is probably one of our favorite favorites right now for 2013. Lots of interesting information. Thank you so much, Art. Art Hogan, right, market strategist you. at Lazard Capital Markets.